to you. Everyone and welcome to Mile High Stadium. Beautiful afternoon, 70 degrees, sunny skies, a sellout, 75,000, the 112th straight sellout here at Mile High Stadium. Tom Hammond and Reggie Rucker ready to bring you the action as the Houston Oilers take on the Denver Broncos. Tony Zendejas set to kick it off for the Oilers. The Broncos will receive deep Vance Johnson and Greg Lang. The Broncos are recorded two and two. The Houston Oilers one and three in this young season. Zendejas with the kick. Taken by Lyon. To the 25 to see with it cracked to the ground, short of the 25-yard line. Alan Lighty on the coverage for the Houston Oilers. So the Denver Broncos will put it in play. And Reggie Rucker, what about offensive keys to the game for Denver this afternoon? For the Denver Broncos, it's the solid rushing of Sammy Winder. The all-pro running back, trolling the football up front against this young defense of the Houston Oilers. Of course, John Elway, the quarterback for the Denver Broncos. He'll put his team into action from their own 23-yard line. Slot formation to the left, Winder, the lone setback. First play of the game. Johnson in motion. Elway pitches to Winder. Finds some room outside. Across the 25 to about the 27 before Bo Eason comes up from his free safety spot to make the stop. Let's set the offensive starting lineup now for the Denver Broncos. John Elway has passed for over 200 yards in each game so far this season. Sammy Winder coming off a great game against Miami. Johnson, Watson, two tight ends, Wright and Kay to begin the game. Up front, Stuttered, Hood, Brian, Howard, and Lanier. Gain of five on the first place, second and five from the Broncos, 28. Pitch to the other side, Winder. Up close to the first down. Gets up just shy of the 35-yard line. It'll be close to first down territory. Let's take a look at the defensive lineup now for the Houston Oilers. And they've been a little weak against the run. Here is the front three, Childress, Stensrud, and Baker. The linebackers for the Oilers, Lyles, Riley, Abraham, and Meads. And the secondary, which has been doing a good job, Brown, Allen, Bostic, and Eason. First down for the Denver Broncos. The initial first down of the game marked the ball at the 33-yard line. One of the keys to the game, Tom, is the play of Billy Bryan, the center for the Denver Broncos. If he can handle Stendrew by himself, watch for the Denver guards, who are good ones, on the pulling tactics outside with Winder carrying. Watson wide left, Johnson in motion. Take the Winder, this is Elway's first pass. And a man open. Just overshot his man, Sewell. Steve Sewell streaking down the right sideline, couldn't quite get there. Steve Sewell, the number one draft choice from the University of Oklahoma. They will use Sewell in the H-back formation where he will fake a lot of the run action. Now they're trying to isolate number 30 on a linebacker going down the right sideline. Now Elway with his great throwing arm looks back across the field and just lets one fly. Just out of the reach of Steve Sewell. That'll set up a second and 10 situation from the Broncos 33-yard line. No score in the game. Opening series, 13-18, first quarter. Elway. Scrambling. Gets about to the 39-yard line. Jesse Baker, one of the defensive ends, who has led Houston in sacks each season since 1979, making the stop on Elway. Let's watch number 67, center of your screen, Mike Stendrew. Big, strong middle guard. Forces the Broncos to double cover him. And that's what Stendrew must make the Broncos do. Elway scrambled for about five yards on the play. It'll be third and five from the Bronco 38-yard line. Elway will operate from the shotgun formation. Will Hyde and Sewell alongside. Complete for the first down to midfield to Sampson. Clint Sampson making the reception for the first down. Robert Abraham inside linebacker and Steve Brown from the corner combining for the stop. Now in third and obvious passing situations, the Broncos get either Clint Sampson or Vance Johnson. They're speed people in the game. Watch the gun that Elway has right there on the money to Sampson, who takes a good shot inside and hangs on to the football. Was a flag on the play. Houston was offside. The Broncos declined the penalty. Number 79, defense, penalty declined. First down. Jerry Seaman, the referee this afternoon. The Oilers sideline, Hugh Campbell. 
Of course, has struggled since coming to Houston, had compiled a great record in the Canadian Football League. Tom, the one thing you don't want to do with Elway, ironically, is you don't want Elway to get outside because he is most dangerous when he is throwing on the run. First down from the Broncos from midfield. Split backs in the backfield. Play action. Elway dumped it off. Intended for Lang. Looks like he just got rid of it as he was getting some pressure from the Houston defense. And this young Houston defense is developing into a very good one. They don't have the offense right now that you would expect uh, from a team as talented as they are on offense. But this young defense, and you watch them all day, particularly the cornerbacks, Brown and Allen, they will play right to the very last gun, and they will play hard, and they will play well. There you see the stats on defense, second in the AFC against the pass. It's been against the run that they're weak, 13th in the AFC and next to last in the entire NFL. Second and 10 from midfield for the Broncos. Sewell in motion. Elway straight back. In trouble. Still scrambling. He's going to run it. Slides after a gain of about three. He was way back. In trouble, got away from the rush. Meads finally took him to the turf after about a three-yard game. When you began to compare John Elway to the great quarterbacks Marino and the Moons and so forth, the one thing you have to concede to Elway is this. He can get away from the rush. He has escapability. Watch the good move down. Get out of the way, Jerry Seaman. You're in the way there. Now, Elway will come down the left sideline here. Now, one thing Elway can do to take this pressure away from himself is to slide. It go in feet first, and they can't hit you. This way, you're going to get a headache. We'd like to welcome those viewers who have just joined us from the Pittsburgh-Miami game. We're in Mile High Stadium. Tom Hammond and Reggie Rucker. No score. Opening series of the game. The Broncos took the opening kickoff. They have advanced just beyond midfield on this first series and will be pacing a third and six from the 46-yard line of the Oilers. I don't, we don't know at this point who is down, Tom. I, maybe you saw the number. It is a Houston Oiler player. And right in front of the Bronco bench, and we can't pick up the number because the players are all standing right around. The last play was a scramble by John Elway, who was trapped about 20 yards behind the line, was able to avoid the rush of Mike Stensrud, and was able to get a gain of about three on the play. Johnny Meads, we understand, is the player down. Meads, 6'2", 225, two-year veteran out of Nichols State, and a starting outside linebacker. All right, we'll take a break now. No score from Denver, Houston against the Broncos. The Meads of the Houston Oilers being taken from the field on a stretcher. It appeared to be his right knee that was banged up. So Meads leaves the field. Frank Bush will come in at an outside backer to take his place. John Elway in the huddle for the Denver Broncos. His team facing a third down situation with the first drive of the game. One of the things Coach Dan Reeves said his Broncos must do to win the game today is convert third downs. A crucial one here, third and six. L.A. in the shotgun. Good protection. Almost intercepted. Steve Brown had a hand on it as Elway went to the turf. They got to him that time. Two things. The Oilers coverage is so good. Last week. They held Dallas to one of 14 third down conversions. That's excellent. Look at the pressure now on Elway. He throws the football, and they're dropping him. And that's what Houston wants to do. All right, Denver with its first punting situation of the game. It'll be a fourth down and a punting situation. Chris Norman, the two-year veteran out of South Carolina, in punt formation for the Denver Broncos. Tries to get the corner. A big bounce and out of bounds. Beautiful kick by Norman. They'll mark it inside the five-yard line. Norman doing a great job. A 42-yard kick out of bounds at the four. No score from Denver. Back to Denver. It's a day the Chamber of Commerce could brag about here at Mile High <laughs> Stadium. 70 degrees. Beautiful game. And the game is holding up as advertised so far, Tom. The aggressive Houston Oilers with that excellent cornerback combination that they have going against these Denver Broncos. And after the great punt by Norman, Houston will get his first offensive possession at its own four-yard line. Warren Moon, the quarterback for the Oilers. 
give to the first man through, and not much there as the Broncos stack it up right in the center. Larry Moriarty hit just about at the line of the scrimmage. We talked about the key to the game for Denver. What about Houston offensively? For Houston, we're going to talk the same thing. Rushing the ball on first down, trying to pick up four yards or more. This will keep Warren Moon out of those obvious passing situations where he has been sacked 22 times in the last four football games. Second and eighth, they got a couple of yards on the first play, so they're not living up to Reggie's key to the game so far. Only two on their first running play. Second and eight from their own six. Give this time to Moriarty, and again, not much there as he tries the center of the Denver Bronco line. Give him a, a yard or two. He's about to the seven-yard line. Barney Chavis on the stop for the Broncos. Let's set the lineup for you. The Oilers, Warren Moon at quarterback. Wolfolk and Moriarty are the running backs. Wide receivers Smith and Drew Hill with Jamie Williams, the tight end. And the offensive line, Salem, Munchak, Romano, Schumacher, and Matthews. Remember, they allowed 12 sacks of Moon against the Cowboys a week ago. Third and six. Five defensive backs in the game for Denver. They give to Wolfolk. Wolfolk comes across the 15, fights his way almost to the 20-yard line, and an Oiler first down. Good, smart play calling by the Oilers to take pressure off of Warren Moon with the draw play. There's the defensive line of the Broncos. Denver ranking eighth in the AFC in defense. Chavis, Carter, and Jones up front. The linebackers, Ryan Hundley, starting today. Busick and Woodard. And in the secondary for Denver, Wright, Wilson, Harden, and Foley. Mike Rozier into the lineup. He is the tailback in the eye formation for the Houston Oilers. First down, Oilers. Ball marked at their own 20-yard line. Moon pitches to Rozier. Rozier hit in the backfield and stopped by Jones. Roland Jones got in to stop Rozier for a loss. No score here in Denver. Let's go to Bob Costas. Championship Series starting Tuesday night here on NBC as Toronto will be hosting Kansas City. It's all the league championship action, American and National Leagues, here on NBC Sports. Give to Rozier. Rozier tries to pick him away third, and Mecklenburg comes in to make the stop. The man that's leading the AFC in sacks with the defense against the run. An obvious passing situation. You can expect the Oilers to do a lot of this. Draw plays and screens. Watch number 77, Mecklenburg, leading the AFC in sacks. Catches Mike Rozier on the draw play. He not only sacks him, but he tackles him as well. It'll be third and 12 for the Houston Oilers with the ball marked at their own 18-yard line. Wolfolk and Rozier in the backfield. Warren Moon calling signals for his Oilers. Their first possession of the game. No score. Eight and a half minutes remaining first quarter. Moon completes his first pass to Wolfolk. And he'll be taken out of bounds shy of the 25-yard line and well shy of the first down marker. Safety Mike Harden comes up to make the stop. Here in final scores, Miami a winner over Pittsburgh, 24-20. It was Cleveland outlasting New England. San Francisco pouring it on the Falcons in Atlanta. That's in the fourth quarter. Another fourth quarter score. Chicago has come from behind to lead Tampa Bay. Green Bay putting it on Detroit, 43-10. And a new coach didn't help Buffalo. The Colts air out 49-17. Fourth quarter, New Orleans over Philadelphia by two. The Eagles have come back. Lance Johnson deep to receive the punt from Lee Johnson of Houston. Takes it at the 40 to the 45 midfield. He's got a wall. Johnson taken down just shy of the Oilers' 30-yard line. Steve Tasker making a saving tackle after the punt by Johnson. Good re return of the punt by Vance Johnson for the Denver Broncos. They'll have excellent field position. A 38-yard kick, but a 31-yard return by Johnson just shy of the Oilers' 30-yard line. The irony with this play is that Vance Johnson came to Denver by swapping choices with Houston, and you know the player that Houston got with the draft choice? The fellow that just kicked the ball, Lee Johnson. Fastest man in the draft a year ago, number 82, Vance Johnson. They set up a wall for him that was great, too. Once he got to the outside, he had plenty of running room. So the Broncos, with excellent field position, they'll begin from the Oiler 31-yard line. And John Elway came up to the line of scrimmage, saw something he didn't like, I think, in his own alignment, and quickly called for a timeout. So the Broncos are forced to waste a timeout. And we'll be back to Denver in a moment. No score, Oilers and Broncos.
Denver Broncos, first down. Here's a pitch back to Winder. To the 30 inside of the 26-yard line where he's knocked out of bounds. Childress coming up to make the stop for the Oilers, but not after a good gain on the play by Sam Winder. Last year, of course, the Broncos won the AFC West. The Oilers struggled. Reggie, here's one of the reasons. The Broncos a year ago were 25th in defense and 22nd in offense in the National Football League. But they were in black numbers in takeaway giveaway. Notice the Oilers in 84. They were in red numbers. Their record, 3 and 13. Very significant statistic. Eight of five for Winder on that last play. Second and five for the Denver Broncos. No score in the game. Eight minutes to play first quarter. Elway hands again to Winder. Gets up just shy of the 20 and perhaps a yard shy of the first down. Avon Riley makes the stop. I'd say we, we said a key to this game was the center versus the middle guard. Billy Bryan, number 64 versus number 67, Stendrew. Watch Bryan, 64, in the middle of your screen. Along with Winford Hood, take care of Stendrew. Result, Winder right up the middle for a great game. Why is that such a key to this game, Reggie? Because if Bryan can handle Stendrew one-on-one, -on -one, the Broncos get double-team blocking on both ends, and there should be running lanes for Winder. Third and one for the Broncos. Eye formation in the backfield. Winder, the tailback. They go straight ahead. They give to Lang, and he pounds ahead enough for the first down. Childress makes the stop, but Lang got first down yardage. And the Broncos keep their drive alive. Let's take a look at the blocking right in the center of the screen. Once again, they're doing a job on number 67, Stendrud. That's not to say Stendrud isn't doing a fine job because he is. That's just the focal point of the Denver rushing attack. Dean Moraldi was working on him that time. Moraldi 6'5", 285, four-year veteran out of Utah. First and 10 from the 20-yard line. Broncos looking to score the first points of the game. L.A. Fires it inside. Good defensive coverage that time, and a flag goes down. Perhaps pass interference will be called on Steve Brown. Well, let's take a really good look at this because I think this will point out the new rules. Steve Johnson, number 24. Steve Brown, I'm sorry. He's excellent at holding the receiver up. Now watch him go for the ball. That looks like an excellent play, but pass interference was called. Steve Watson was the intended receiver for the Broncos. Here's pass the call. Pass interference, number 24. Defense, first down. So Steve Brown was called for pass interference. And they'll mark the ball at the 11-yard line, where the Broncos will have a first down. Mark Cooper into the lineup for the Broncos, bringing the play from the sideline. Dan Reeves calls all the plays for the Broncos. Lang and Winder in the backfield. He gives straight ahead. Lang cuts his way down to the five-yard line. Riley and Abraham make the stop. Well, a moment ago, that big pass interference call on Steve Brown, and today before the game, Reggie Rucker talked to Brown about the new pass interference rule. Every time. And another flag goes down as Winder is stopped short of the first down. Abraham, inside linebacker, coming up to make the stop. We'll check the flag. There's going to be a holding call against Denver. So the Broncos drive momentarily at least stalled by the penalty. Coach Dan Reeves said they've really been working on eliminating penalties that hurt them a week ago against the Dolphins. It's been a breakdown here, a breakdown there for the Denver Broncos. We'll continue on in a moment. Holding, number 64, offense, still second down. And quite frankly, Danny Reeves can't seem to get it all together, but this is the highest scoring team in the American Football Conference. But the thing that's hurting Denver, they've always in the past had that good takeaway ratio. They've always been able to score touchdowns and pick up fumbles and run them for touchdowns that win football games with their defense, and their defense isn't doing that this year. Broncos now with a second and 14 after the holding penalty against Billy Bryan. That's the man we've been watching. The Broncos center is going against Mike Stensrue. Elway to pass. Rolls to his right. For the end zone. Up for grabs and incomplete. Bo Easton, the safety there on the coverage. They had good coverage that time. Easton let it go into a crowd as Stensrue was pressuring him. And couldn't find anyone. We talked about how dangerous John Elway is once he begins to scramble. I don't know how wise it is to make a throw like this. I think this ball gets away from John. Now watch the pass here. It's wobbly and it's high. It does slip out of the hand of John Elway because, quite frankly, I think John wanted to throw that football away. 
Elway has passed for 200 yards in each of the first four games of the season for the Broncos. You know, Kenny Houston, the defensive backfield coach at the Houston Oilers, says that his cornerback, Steve Brown and Patrick Allen, and now number one draft choice, Richard Johnson, are two of the finest covering defensive backs in all of pro football. The thing that they need now is recognition. Paul Howard shaken up on the play, starting right guard for the Broncos. 12-year veteran out of Brigham Young and being taken to the sideline. This isn't the prototypical modern-day offensive line, Tom. It's not very big, but they are very quick. They get out on the streets very quickly, and they have good pass drops. Third down, 14 yards to go at the 15-yard line of the Oilers. Elway from the shotgun. Pressure for the end zone. And out of the end zone incomplete. Again, they put pressure on Elway. The key, as Jerry Glanville told us today, the defensive coordinator of the Houston Oilers, is to pressure him. Put plenty of pressure on John Elway. Now, Elway reads the coverage very well, but I'll tell you, once again, those Houston cornerbacks are covering the Denver receivers like blankets. Only one of six this afternoon for Elway. Jesse Baker applying the pressure that time. And Rich Carlos will come in to attempt the field goal. The Broncos this season have scored every time they've been inside the opponent's 20-yard line. And Carlos will attempt to keep the string going. He has hit 12 in a row, which is a new Denver record. He's 8-for-8 eight eight in 1985. This one, 37 yards. Flags down. They blew the whistle and threw the flags before they got the play underway. Jerry Seaman. Prior to the snap, number 88, false start, five-yard penalty. Clarence Kay, the tight end, guilty of the false start. We might mention right here, Tom, that Rich Carlos has made a Denver record 12 straight field goals in a row. Of course, that would have been 13. They're going to move him back five, but I don't think it'll uh, hamper Mr. Collis' efforts at all. He is the third leading scorer in the AFC. has scored 36 points so far this season. So they'll move it five yards further back. Carlos, perfect eight for eight this year. And if you go back to last season, as Reggie said, he is 12 for 12. So a 37 yarder coming up for Rich Carlos. Barefoot kicker. Make it 13 in a row for Carlos, and Denver again has scored. Once they got inside the opponent's 20-yard line, they're 100% in that stat this season. First score of the game, we've got a timeout. 75,000, the 112th consecutive sellout, and the Broncos have just taken a 3-0 lead as Rich Carlos has hit his 13th consecutive field goal. So with five minutes remaining in the first quarter, the Broncos are on the scoreboard first. Carlos kicks it out of the end zone, and the Oilers will put the ball in play. Did the Oilers get any kind of lift that time? Because the Broncos had advanced inside their five-yard line, but they were able to hold them to a field goal. I think the, 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 the confidence that this young Oilers defense is growing is, is evident. It, and, and they're hoping, I would think, that permeates to the other side of the football, which the, uh, is the offensive unit. Hugh Campbell in his second season as head coach of the Oilers, a record of 4-16. and 16. Houston leads this series with Denver. 17 wins for the Oilers, 9 wins for the Broncos. Warren Moon on first down. Hit. Ball out of his hands. It'll be an incomplete pass. Incomplete pass and not a fumble as Moon was blindsided. Denver leads 3-0. Let's go to Bob Costas, NFL 85. Tom, this is Wesley Walker's first reception of the season, a 38-yard throw from Ken O'Brien and a fine catch. Moments later, Tony Page scored on a short run, and the Jets have tied the Bengals in Cincinnati, 7-7. They're in the second quarter. And here in Denver, the Broncos leading the Oilers 3-0, 4 minutes, 55 seconds, first quarter. Second and 10 for Moon and the Oilers. Here's the draw play. Rozier hit once, bounces off, gets to the outside. 
and turns nothing into a gain of a couple of yards before Woodard from the outside linebacker spot can take him out of bounds. It's so hard to compress your offense to a point where you're running on first down and then running draw plays on second and third. Here's the reason why they're so afraid to throw the football right now. Sack differential. The teams last year with the best sack differential were all in the playoffs a year ago. And in 1985, is that stat holding up, Reggie? Sure is. Denver is still in the plus area, and Houston Oilers are in red letters. They have to get to black letters. Houston, 14th in the AFC in offense, especially weak in that department so far this season. One and three record, although a couple of those losses have been deceptively close. Moon under pressure, lets it go. Incomplete, almost intercepted by Harden. Tony Lilly on the coverage for the Broncos and almost able to pick it off. Moon has really been under pressure. Warren Moon virtually under siege by the pressure of first the Dallas Cowboys and now the Denver Broncos. Watch him once again. Rulon Jones, number 75, coming on the outside. Number 31 is Mike Harden on a safety blitz. And that's unusual for the Denver Broncos because they don't usually blitz their safeties. Tony Lilly got a hand on it, couldn't hold it. Punt formation for Lee Johnson has averaged 42.1, as you see, as longest has been 59 yards. Vance Johnson awaits the punt. Had a good return earlier in the game. This time can't get to the outside and will be taken down at about his 32-yard line. Mike Q down on the coverage for the Houston Oilers. 50-yard punt, five-yard return for Vance Johnson. Well, I hope you'll join in. Four and a half minutes to play first quarter. Broncos first and ten from their own 32. They have a three-nothing lead. Elway to Winder. Plows his way up across the 35 to the 36 with Frank Bush, who came in for the injured Johnny Meads, hanging on for dear life. Meads left the game with a knee injury and will not return this afternoon. When you have a man like John Elway as your, as your quarterback, and you know his offense is deep downfield, Sammy Winder's rushing yards there in 85. The temptation is to want to throw the football a lot, but Dan Rees has intimated to us that he is going to take advantage of what they do best, and that's run the football. Super Sam Winder comes off a 103-yard performance against the Dolphins a week ago, his fifth highest career rushing game. He got four on that last place, second and six. Elway goes long. Sampson collides with an offensive man. Flag goes down. Patrick Allen on the coverage. Sampson trying for the reception. We'll see what the call is. Unless the defensive back is looking back for the football, let's take a look at it. Now watch 29. He has to be looking back for the football. He is not looking back for the football. He runs into the receiver. Correct call Passing by the here. officials. Number 29, defense, first down. Second pass interference call against the Houston secondary. They are second in the AFC in pass defense. The first call went against Steve Brown. This time, Patrick Allen guilty of interference. It gives the Broncos a first down at the 29-yard line of the Oilers. Broncos a 3-0 lead. Fox stopped 348 to play first quarter. Elway with split backs in the backfield. Sampson in motion. Scrambles. He's got a lot of running room. Slides down just shy of the 20-yard line. Let's check some other scores now from around the National Football League this afternoon. Final score, Miami in the Orange Bowl. Coming from behind to beat Pittsburgh. Cleveland wins by four over New England. Also a final, San Francisco after a slow start beating the Falcons. Another final, Chicago remaining unbeaten. 27-19 at Tampa Bay. Green Bay really pouring it on the Lions this afternoon. And Indianapolis getting its offense in gear against the Buffalo Bills. New Orleans squeaking out at home against the Eagles. Second and four for the Broncos. Hand off in the backfield to Lang. Lang is going to be stopped for about no gain on the play. Bo Eason from his free safety spot coming up to stop Lang and knock him out of bounds. Eason, uh, second-year man out of California, Davis, 6'2", 200 pounds. Number 74. Winford Hood is filling in for the injured Keith Bishop. Number 74 coming around. Watch the pulling block. Good block there by Hood. Lang continuing on outside. Picks up some good yardage, but it was a good block by Winford Hood that sprung him. Frank 
push, getting a little penetration for the Oilers. It'll be third and three. Gain of a yard on that last play. Third and three for the Broncos. Premature movement. Elway scrambling to his right. Being chased by Childress, he goes out of bounds, and we'll see whether the Oilers jumped offside or whether they were drawn by the Broncos. If it's against the Oilers, it'll be a Denver first down. See if we can pick it up. Ready? Well, we can't see Elway, so we can't see the inflection maybe that bobbing his head would cause, and sometimes that's what it is. It's the quarterback's rhythm. Jerry Seaman and crew sorting things out. Here's the call. Offside, right side, defensive line, five-yard penalty. So a key mistake by the Oilers. They had the Broncos with a third down and three to go. And with the penalty, it'll be a Bronco first down, keeping the drive alive. When you take a look at it, though, Tom, the Houston Oilers defensively are playing really terrific football, I believe, except for the one pass interference call. They're playing outstanding. The offense of the Houston Oilers is putting too much pressure on the defense to stay in the football game. And the Broncos traditionally outscore you in the first quarter because of this mile-high air, as I've contended. And on the other hand, the Oilers have been outscored in the first quarter in 1985, 44-0. Back now 47 to nothing. They trail 3 nothing here with 2.53 to go in the first quarter. This drive for the Broncos aided by two penalties. Here's the reverse. Give it to Vance Johnson. Got one man to beat. Whoa! To the five and out of bounds at the one. Johnson on the reverse. Electrifying move by Vance Johnson. Here it is, the fake up field, the handoff from Winder. Two Oilers missed deep in the backfield. Now watch the move by Vance Johnson coming in here. 4-2-9 in the 40. He makes a great move inside, then high steps it. Broncos are in business. And Bo Eason makes a saving tackle right at about the one. Watch it from the end zone. Once again, one of the fastest men in professional football today, Vance Johnson. He really puts the charge into the Broncos' offense when he is in the football game. But a move on Patrick Allen right there that turned Allen completely around before Eason makes the tackle. They're going to mark it at the three-yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Broncos from that point. There's another loss for the Oilers' linebacking core. That is Robert Abraham, really one of the outstanding linebackers particularly at that inside position in pro football. They've already lost Meade. Oh, I wonder if this defense can stand that type of loss. So two starting linebackers, both right side linebackers, have gone down for the Oilers. Abraham and before that, Meads. Alan Lyde will come in to replace Abraham. Lyde, a defensive back, plays safety. Reggie, we're talking about the mile-high altitude here. And, of course, you played here. Uh, what effect did it have on you? How did it manifest itself, this thin air? Well, I always believe that the visiting teams didn't have the recuperation time that they normally have at sea level. Consequently, they were fatigued, and the, the Broncos were always able to score first, get out ahead of you, and then you were ultimately always trying to catch up with them. 5,280 feet here at Mile High Stadium. And the Broncos traditionally have outscored their opponents here in the first quarter. Perhaps what Reggie says, it takes a while to adjust to the altitude. Right now, they're threatening to go up 10-0 on the Oilers. Clint Sampson put the block on Abraham that sent Abraham to the sideline. First and goal, Broncos from the Oiler three. Lang and Winder, the running backs. Two tight ends. Elway to pass. Scrambles and throws it away. Nice catch by an usher. But Reggie Elway looked like he started to break up the middle. There's the usher who made the good catch. <laughs> well, I thought it was a, 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 a play in which Elway could have run right now, gone as far as he could upfield and dove for the end zone, but he decided not to risk that. Throws the football away. That's a good move as well. It looked like you during your playing career with that catch. <laughs> Elway has had his problems this afternoon. One of seven for only 12 yards. Remember, he has passed for over 200 yards in each game so far this season. Second and goal from the three. Pitch to Winder. Just short of the goal line. Jeff Donaldson from a safety spot. Kept him out of the end zone, and it'll be third down for the Broncos at about the one. 
a valiant effort here by the Oilers defense. When you consider that Meads and Abraham are out of the ball game. Bostic, number 25, good strong hitter. That's Dan Reeves, the, my former teammate with the Dallas Cowboys. In his fifth season here in Denver, he's 136 and lost 25. Hugh Campbell on the Oilers' sideline. Here's the play, Winder. Bronco fans applauding Super Sam Winder who takes it into the end zone from a yard out. Watch it again. The offensive line establishing the line of scrimmage, moving the Oilers back off of the ball and a good hard low charge of Sammy Winder for the touchdown. Winder is built low to the ground, 5'11", 203 pounds, four-year veteran out of Southern Mississippi. Carlos will try to add the extra point. It's good. And with a minute 57 to play in the first quarter, the Denver Broncos have taken a 10-0 lead on Houston. As you watch the charge by Sammy Winder for the touchdown, two things are very much in evidence. One, the Oilers having given up 54 points in the first quarter this year to zero. And also the 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 mile-high atmosphere that, see, that tends to exhaust the visiting team to a point where you get behind this football team, that's when they really begin to rush you. Dan Reeves on the Denver sideline. Elway has not had a good day passing so far, but the Broncos have taken a 10-0 lead. That last drive helped by a couple of crucial penalties. Houston's not playing that bad defensively, but the penalties, the key mistakes have hurt them, and their offense has to get something going. They've had a couple of pass interference calls that are very tight, and when you play bump and run tight man-to-man -man defense like the oldest play, you're going to have some of those. Bump and run tight man-to-man -man defense like the oldest play, you're going to have some of those. Let's look at the scoring drive. Seven plays, 68 yards, 235, the one-yard run by Winder. Of course, the pass interference was the key to the drive. And, of course, on the third down, they had a five-yard penalty on a third and three situation that gave them the easy first down to keep the drive alive. Robert Abraham, the Oiler linebacker, they say may have a hit pointer, but will return. In fact, is already back in the game on the special team. Carlos, ready to kick. Tasker and Drury are deep for the Oilers. Tasker takes it right at the goal line. To the 20, as flags fly to the 24-yard line, we'll check the penalty. It's going to be a holding call against the Oilers. Well, nothing going right for Houston here in the first quarter. They continue to make those crucial mistakes. I call this negative momentum because... ...will take on the Cardinals, all the league championship action here on NBC. From their seven, the Oilers put it in play. Trying to get outside with Wolfolk. Nothing there. Busey comes up to make the stop from an inside backer spot for the Denver Broncos. And again, the Oilers not able to get that ground game going. The Oilers, whether they want to or not, are going to have to change the pattern of their play calling. They've been running the ball on first down, running the ball on second down, and draw play on third down. It might help if the Oilers pass the football on first down and run on third down. Steve Foley injured on the play. As you see, the Oilers standing offensively not very good mm. for the Oilers uh, so far in 1985. 12th in rushing, last in passing, last overall. Steve Foley uh, of the Broncos shaken up. They're tending to him on the sideline. Foley, who has two interceptions to lead the Broncos so far this year, the 10-year veteran from Tulane. And also into the game, Tom Jackson, who's just come off injured reserve for the Broncos, 13-year veteran out of Louisville. He had arthroscopic surgery on a right knee, but activated for this game. He's an inspiration to this defense. He is. He is the spiritual and inspirational leader of the Denver, Bron Denver Broncos football team. And many people believe that the reason why this defensive outfit hasn't had the kind of success it has had in the past is because of the absence of Tom Jackson. Steve Busick comes back in as Foley has helped to the sideline. Wolfolk got two yards on that last play. Mark the ball at the Oiler nine. It'll be second and eight. There's Tom Jackson, 57. They have an inspirational player award here with the Broncos, and it's been in existence for four years. Jackson has won it all four years. Second and eight for the Oilers. Warren Moon. Timing pattern too tall to handle to Wolfolk out of the backfield. Nothing clicking for the Oilers so far. Let's check some other scores. 
second quarter score in the late games. The Raiders in the Coliseum leading the Chiefs 7-3. Second quarter score as well. Seattle has kicked a field goal to lead the Chargers. In the second, Cincinnati has gone on top of the Jets by a field goal. And of course here in Denver, the Broncos with a 10-0 lead. A minute 13 to play in the first quarter. And hold on to your hat because you can expect the blitz. Blitz coming for the Broncos on third and eight. Let's see how Moon reacts. He tightens his formation to bring in some help for the blocking. Retreats to his goal line. Shows a little release pass. It's complete, but at the five-yard line, a loss in the play. Moriarty couldn't get anything going as Woodard from the outside backer spot came up to make the stop. He read it perfectly, and the Oilers again frustrated offensively. The Denver defense is dictating to the Houston Oilers what they're going to run. Watch Mecklenburg, number 77, outside. Salem does a fine job of get, getting him away from Moon, but there's too much pressure up the middle of the offensive line. Steve Foley injured his left shoulder, has been taken beneath the stands to the portable x-ray machine where they'll check him out. In the meantime, Lee Johnson, who has kicked two times for a 44 average today in puck formation with 30 seconds to play in the first quarter, standing in his own end zone. Kicks it on a line drive punt taken by Johnson. Fumbles, kicks it, dives on it at about the 38-yard line. Well, it was a line drive kick. I think he saw so much running room in front of him that he took his eye off the ball. There it is. It's a line drive kick, as you said, Tom, and that's the best kind of punt to return, particularly when the coverage team is backed up in its own end of the field. He boots the ball and fortunately is able to recover it, and I think he had the wind knocked out of it. 20 seconds remaining first quarter. The Broncos, with Johnson a little shaken up, like he had the wind knocked out of him, They're leading by 10-0 over the Oilers, and again with excellent field position. The ball is on the 39-yard line of the Oilers. Seems like we played this first quarter in Oiler territory. This is an important defensive stand for Houston. Elway will pass on first down. Flags go down, pass complete, short of the first down. Watson takes it for about a nine-yard gain. Allen takes him out of bounds. Penalty flags on the turf. I think Denver's going to be flagged for holding. Discussion taking place, and Elway gives the signal to the Denver bench, and it looks like it was holding against the Broncos. Here's Jerry Seaman. Holding, number 53, defense. Holding, number 64, offense. Offsetting penalties, bring it back. Well, once again, nothing going right for the Oilers. Offsetting penalties. The best offensive lineman that the Broncos have, number 64, in the center of your screen, blocking on number 72, Mike Soche. Soche doing a terrific job of backing Bryan right into the lap of Elway. Penalties so far in the game. The Oilers, 57 costly yards. A couple of, actually, three key penalties against the Oilers. Two for 15, the Broncos, who will replay first down from the Oilers' 39-yard line. 14 seconds, first quarter. Broncos with a 10-0 lead. Winder fumbles. Still loose. And finally taken by the Broncos, James Wright falls on it after it was kicked around several times. Oilers unable to get that free ball. That could have been a big break for them. The Oilers are playing as if they know that this is a key defensive series for them. Almost got the turnover at that point. That's the end of the first quarter of play from Denver with the Broncos leading the Oilers. Another fumble. That's the thing he's been trying to eliminate, those little mistakes. He has a good record, of course, here with the Broncos and a former teammate of yours. That's right, in Dallas, and he was a very good friend and hated to leave him. And I'm quite frankly surprised that uh, he ever left the Texans, uh, the, the Cowboys. I'll tell you, he is beleaguered in terms of what can he do to help alleviate some of those small problems. Now, I know that during the course of practice, if you make a mental mistake, he'll have you run a penalty lap. An old Tom Landry uh, defense. From the shotgun, Elway facing second and 14 from the Oiler, 43. Swings a pass complete to Wilhite. Got some blocking. Gets to the 35-yard line before Bush knocks him out of bounds. Well, a moment ago, the Oilers had a golden opportunity to pick up the Bronco fumbled. Here's how it went. Here it is. This is Winder with the football, and the Oilers are scratching and clawing, and the ball pops loose. They have an excellent chance right there, Baker, to pick it up and run with it, but... You know that football is shaped the way it is for a reason, and no one can seem to pick it up. There it is, lying on the ground. and Finally covered by James Wright, James I think Wright. it was. Mm -hmm. 
third and five after a nine yard gain on the last play ball marked at the 34 yard line of the Oilers who trailed the Broncos 10 nothing opening minute of the second quarter from Denver Butch Johnson wide to the left Elway in the shotgun third and five Blitz Blitz. Coming. Elway reads it first down reception finally taken down after getting the first down Johnson with the catch and Donaldson on the stop Elway read the blitz and got the first down he really got rid of the ball very quick being in the shotgun formation helped him get rid of the football that time however there is a flag on the play see he's in the shotgun formation so he's already away from the rush now he has time to see his receivers he gets rid of the ball but he still takes a blow from Jesse Baker this penalty will be against the Broncos and will nullify that first down reception by Johnson. Illegal formation, only six men on the line of scrimmage, offense, replay, third down. Tom, I believe, looking at it on the other side of the football for the Houston Oilers, if they were in the shotgun a little bit more, if Warren Moon had a chance to see some of what's happening in front of him, I think they could get away from some of those unnecessary sacks. I know that Warren Moon doesn't like the shotgun, but it may uh, prove to be the, the remedy in this situation. Third and 11, again, L.A. in the shotgun after the Broncos were penalized. Premature movement by the Oilers that time, and it looks like they'll get the five yards back as Childress broke too soon. Well, the Oilers are just snake-bitten. Well, that's a question of a staggered cadence call by Elway. Prior to the snap, number 79, encroachment, defense, still third down, five-yard penalty. Sometimes a quarterback will come out of the huddle and they'll call a play like this. Hut, hut. And then there are other times, if he wants the defense to come offside, he'll go, hut, hut, hut. And that's called a staggered cadence, and that will bring the defense offside. And... Uh, I think that was Childress, who is a rookie and who isn't used to hearing that kind of cadence call. Childress, the rookie, 6'6", 267 pounds from Texas A&M. Broncos got the five yards back, third down, six yards to go at the 34-yard line of Houston. No way under pressure. And just threw it because he was feeling the pressure, threw it way short of the mark. Watson, the intended receiver. Easton right there on the coverage and the Elway feeling the pressure. Now watch this. Had he not been in the shotgun, they would have sacked him. But because he is away from center, because he sees things, he can just throw the ball away. Now the rush hasn't sacked him. Houston certainly has shut down Elway today. He's only two for nine, 22 yards passing here in the first half, 14 minutes remaining in the second quarter. Broncos, however, do have a 10-0 lead as Rich Carlos comes in to try to make it 13-0. This will be a 52-yard field goal attempt. His longest this year has been 48. No good. Carlos has his string broken. He had hit 13 in a row, but on the 14th, he misses. So we've got a top. Denver Broncos, first and 10. Oiler, 34-yard line. 13.58 second quarter. Broncos lead it 10-0. Excuse me, Oilers with the first down play. And it is Moriarty that gets the call and takes it up shy of the 40-yard line. And the Oilers need to get the offense moving. The defense has been on the field a long time. In fact, Denver has had the ball 9 minutes, 21 seconds to only 5 and a half minutes for Houston. We talked about how important it is on first down for Houston when they run the football to pick up 4 yards or more. Now, they did it that time. Let's see if they don't convert for a first down in this series. 5-yard gain for Moriarty that time. Steve Foley, free safety at the Broncos. Separated shoulder will not play again today. And off to Rozier, gets outside, first down, in the Bronco territory to the 45-yard line. From the field level, Mike Rozier making his presence known here in the Houston lineup. The 1983 Heisman Trophy winner from Nebraska has been playing football year-round. Outstanding blocking on the left side of the line. Jamie Williams gets a tremendous block. Here comes Rozier, number 33, with the outstanding speed on the outside. He hasn't been carrying the ball enough. I think the, the Rozier style is to carry the football a lot of times, Tom. Played 18 USFL games, came right to the NFL, but he's given the Oilers a first down at the 45-yard line. We've played mostly in Oiler territory so far. That's a big first down. Moon rolls out, completes it for another first down to tight end Jamie Williams, who caught it in traffic. Jamie Williams is the guy that does a lot of blocking for this Houston running game. 
He's not known for his pass catching abilities, but this is what makes the play. The faking, sending the linebackers one way. Now Moon rolls to the right. He's an outstanding passer on the run. Hits Jamie Williams, who picks up a first down. Beautiful pass. Williams on the reception from Moon. You see his stats for 1985. Tony Lilly made the stop for Denver, but an Oiler first down there at the 28 of Denver. Stan Edwards on the carry for the Oilers. Doesn't get much there. Busick leading the defensive charge for the Broncos. Again, the running game has not been good for the Oilers. That's right. And they didn't pick what they pick up that time. One yard. This is where they've been getting into trouble because they haven't been converting against the nickel defense. The other teams are bringing in four or five extra uh, people on uh, passing situations, and the Oilers haven't handled it well. Two yards on the carry for Edwards. Carry the ball for only the sixth time this season on that last one. Second and eight from the Bronco 26. Moon takes. Let's it fly on the run incomplete. Williams again, the intended receiver. Louis Wright with good coverage for the Broncos. Louis Wright. Of course, is the veteran 11 years out of San Jose State. He's one of the good ones. Once again, number 87, Jamie Williams. Crossing pattern, Moon rolling out to that side. The play takes too long to develop. Number 20, Louis Wright, who's been playing that cornerback position for a long time, and he plays it as well as anybody who's ever played it. Crucial situation here for the Oilers to keep this drive alive. Third and eight. The Oilers trail the Broncos 10-0. 11-22 remaining in the first half from Denver. Moon retreats, has the time, complete. Drew Hill on the reception, on the second effort, gets the first down and is taken out of bounds. Roger Jackson took him out of bounds, but Drew Hill made the reception for the first down. He had an opportunity to see the passing gift of Moon. Air 77, Mecklenburg, the leading pass sacker in the AFC, runs right by Warren Moon. Moon unloads that shotgun arm of his and hits Drew Hill for a first down. Drew Hill takes it down to the 17-yard line. There's Hill, seven-year veteran from Georgia Tech, has a knack for making the long gain on his receptions. He's only caught 11, but for 230 yards and two touchdowns coming into today's game. First down play, a running play, Moriarty takes it to the 15-yard line. Andre Townsend, from a defensive end spot, makes the stop. Short gain, maybe a yard. The Oilers, of course, have taken their lumps in the first quarter, have not scored a point in the first quarter in five games this season, while the opposition has piled up 54, including today's 10 points by the Broncos. And yet they've been competitive in every game that they've played this thus far. And, of course, everyone knows about the Washington game, a game that they should have won. Second and nine for the Oilers. Draw play. Moriarty his way for yardage inside the 10 and down to the nine yard line good second effort by larry moriarty the notre dame grad three-year veteran 6'1 240 pounds that's the kind of running you need down here where the going gets tough people are in closed spaces and moriarty with that strength and that bulk at 240 pounds is able to just plow his way straight ahead for positive yardage that's seven on that last carry. It'll be third and two for the Oilers. Moriarty, the lone setback. Moon to throw. Gets rid of it quickly. Complete, but I believe short of the first down to Wolfolk. Let's see where they spot the ball. It's going to be about a yard short. Mike Harden preventing Wolfolk from making the first down territory. And it'll be a fourth down situation for the Oilers. Some other scores. The Raiders 7-3 over the Chiefs at the Coliseum. Second quarter, Seattle continues to lead 3-0 over San Diego. 13-7, the Bengals extending their lead over the Jets. And the Rams in front of Minnesota by a field goal. Speaking of field goals, we're ready for one here. Tony Zendejas. It'll be a 27-yard attempt for Zendejas, who is 5 of 8 and has been somewhat of a slow player. This one, however, bangs right through the uprights, and the Oilers are on the scoreboard. Nine minutes, five seconds remaining in the first half. It's Denver 10, Houston 3. 
Tom Hammond and Reggie Rucker, Mile High Stadium in Denver, where the Broncos have a 10-3 lead on the Oilers. Tony Zendejas has just hit a field goal for the Oilers. Lee Johnson will kick it off now for Houston. Coach Hugh Campbell alternates his kickers. And that's a beautiful kick by Johnson. It hits about three yards out of the end zone. And here in the thin air of Denver, he banged one out of the end zone. I'd have him kicking off myself if he can kick it that far every time. Johnson, one of the kickers for the Oilers. The other Zendejas, Tony Zendejas, who just hit the field goal, a native of Mexico. And Reggie, he's donating money every time he kicks a field goal to the Earthquake Relief Fund. That's right, $50 per kick. And you know he still has relatives who are in Mexico City. I think Rafael Septien of the Dallas Cowboys is also involved with that fund. Zendejas from a family of kickers has several brothers who are in the place kicking business. First and ten Denver Broncos. Their lead reduced to seven. They put it in play from their own 20. Elway has struggled in the passing department. Has been under pressure all afternoon. Rolls out, gets time, and it's batted down. It looked like Richard Byrd might have gotten a paw on it to knock it to the turf. Now that's a planned play by the Broncos. They like to drop Elway back, then put him in a semi-scramble. The reason why that play didn't work that time is because the Houston Oilers defensive backs played zone Red coverage. Red and when you play zone coverage, you can't lose your man as well as you do when you play man-to-man. -man. And he didn't have any place to throw that football. And it was Frank Bush that got the hand up to knock the pass away. You saw the pocket float out for Elway as he rolled down to his left. Houston plays a lot of man coverage that time in the zone. This is Winder. Gets back to the 20 and nothing more. Ray Childress on the hit for the Oilers. As the Oilers continue to play good defense, if they could avoid the penalties, they'd be good shape. Ray Childress, number 79, has been everything the Houston Oilers organization thought he might be. He's big, he's strong, he applies pressure straight up the field. You, you have to cover him with two people. I think he's going to be a great one in this league. Rookie from Texas A&M, 6'6", 267 pounds, lines up at a left defensive end for the Oilers. Third and 10 for the Broncos. Elway from the shotgun. Pressure. And incomplete intended for Sewell. Sewell made a diving stab, but again, Elway feeling the pressure and went to the turf is John Grimsley blitzing from a linebacker spot put the pressure on. Once again, it's a marvelous job of applying pressure here. 67, Stendrew coming around on a game, gets in Elway's face. He hits there. He's get hit there late. Ball's just outside of Sewell's reach. Grimsley was the man that took Elway down just as he released the ball. And it'll be a fourth down situation for the Broncos. So the Oilers, after getting some life into their offense the last series, are going to get the ball back here and perhaps can... Get that offense cranked up again. Norman sends a beautiful spiral kick. Drury deep makes a fair catch inside the 30-yard line. Beautiful kick that time by Norman, Chris Norman of Denver. Broncos with a 10-3 lead. Timeout, eight minutes remaining in the first half of play. Norman has just kicked a 53-yarder for the the quarterback getting much done this afternoon. Moon stats a little better than Elway's, five of nine. Directed them to a field goal last possession. Did they do anything differently offensively? Well, they were able to pick up yardage on first down, and then they came back on the next series and threw on first down. And in the play, as you see, from their own 29-yard line, trailing 10-3 with eight minutes remaining in the first half from Mile High Stadium. Moon, complete. To the 35 yard line, Mike Rozier on the reception. That's his second reception of the season. What this is is just a very low risk offense, Tom. Apparently, Hugh Campbell has felt that there have been so many things going wrong. The players have their confidences have been hurt so much that he has given them an offense and a game plan which they won't turn the football over and they won't have a lot of sacks. After being sacked 12 times against Dallas last week, they've worked a lot on the short passes. That time they complete one to Rozier for a five-yard gain. Second and five Oilers operating from the I formation. Moon rolls right. Plenty of time. Almost intercepted. It'll go incomplete. Tony Lilly almost picked it off. Broke on the ball perfectly and just about had the interception. Well, there were two receivers in that area, and I felt Warren should have taken the first receiver. Here's the fake, and it's a rollout. Now, there's a receiver right now. Warren should take that and pick up the first down, but he tries to go downfield. The play just takes too long to develop. Almost an interception by Tony Lilly. Mike Aku, the rookie from Hawaii, the intended receiver, almost the interception. There are the quarterbacks this afternoon, as we said. 
Neither Moon nor Elway getting much done in the passing department this afternoon. Total offense, Houston 81 yards, Denver 78. Third and five for the Oilers. Pressure from Jones. Moon escapes. Upfield, he's got a first down and out of bounds. Good scramble by Warren Moon. Now that's the Warren Moon we know. The one who can get away from trouble because the Broncos were bringing everybody that time. You see that he does have uh, 69 yards carrying the football coming into today's game. In fact, he scored two touchdowns running. Watch number 75, Rulon Jones on Harvey Salem, who has just come back last week after being out most of the year. And they really had Warren doing a Houdini act right there. It's away from Mecklenburg as well as Jones and picked up the first down. 42-yard line of the Oilers. Houston has it first and 10. Give to Wolfel. Comes across the 45 up to about the 47-yard line. And let's check uh, baseball scores. The Yankees, Phil Necro.